So in this case, I have tangent of 7 pi um, over 4 plus 5 pi over 6. So I want to expect you guys to write this first term down, but you guys can see this is two angles, u plus v. Right? So could I just kind of like treat this by like taking the formula for tangent and then plugging in those angles in replacement of u and v? Yes? Now notice in the formula, um, 7 pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 6. Notice in the formula, when you're adding two angles for tangent, you add in the numerator but subtract in the denominator. So this is the tangent of 7 pi over 4 plus tangent of 5 pi over 6 all over 1 minus tangent of 7 pi over 4 times the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Okay. Now, when you guys are doing, um, when you guys are going to be showing your work, what I'd like you guys to do is at least show me this step for your quiz. All right? Can we just try to show this step? I know it's a very basic step, but I'd like you guys to take this extra step here in showing me this. Um, because now, this is basically just taking the formula and making sure that you can show me you know the formula. That's all it is. You're just basically knowing, OK, I know which formula it is, and I know how, what the angles are to plug it in. Then the next one is evaluating based on the unit circle. Now, to evaluate the unit circle, I think it's going to be helpful to know the quadrants. 7 pi over 4 um, is in the fourth quadrant, and 5 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant. What do we know about tangent in the second and the fourth quadrant? It's negative. That's important. So all these values are going to be negative. Talk about like some issues that are going to be coming up, right? Um, now we just get a new, now we need to know what is 7 pi over 4. Hopefully, guys, this is what I'm talking about. Evaluating the unit circle should be not a something we should be able to do like this. 5 pi over 6, um, that is going to be a negative square root of 3 over 3. Again, this is all coming from the unit circle, which we've already covered in this class. Now, sometimes since this is minus this product, I'll put it in parentheses just to make sure that I remembered to group those together. Okay? Um, it doesn't really matter, but sometimes that can be helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So let's do negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 3 divided by 1 minus the square root of 3 over 3. OK, now they look very similar, right? Look very similar. The only difference is that's a negative, that's a positive. So should we just divide this out and say it's negative 1? Uh, it's tempting, isn't it? Very tempting. But we can't do that, guys. You can't apply the division property. Um, these are not exactly the same expressions minus a negative. So what we want to do, though, is we notice that we have fractions within fractions. And we actually had a name for those types of functions. Does anybody remember fractions? Does anybody remember what types we call those in chapter 3? Starts with the C, complex, right? Do you guys remember how we got rid of complex fractions, one of the methods? Mm. Yeah, well, no, we didn't rationalize the denominator in that chapter. We are going to rationalize, but not right. How do we get rid of the fractions? Not so much the reciprocal yet. We multiplied, we identified the LCD, and we multiplied everything by the common denominator. So let's look at these fractions and the fractions. What is the common denominator of all of my fractions? 3. So just multiply the top and the bottom by 3. When doing that, I now get a, oh, um, yeah. So now I get a negative 3 minus the square root of 3 all over 3 minus the square root of 3. Now, technically, we'd want to simplify this by rationalizing the denominator. So now we'd want to rationalize the denominator. OK, now when you guys, um, I am going to kind of fall in out of room, so I'm going to continue this over here. So when you do multiply this, I would recommend doing this, guys, um, individually for the numerator. So this is going to be a negative 9 
minus 3 square root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3 minus 3. Now the denominator shouldn't be that bad because that's just a difference of two squares. right? When you multiply out a difference of two squares, you square the first two terms, which is 9, and you square the last two terms, which is negative 3. Okay, now we can simplify this a little bit more. Negative 12 minus 6 square root of 3 divided by 6, which equals negative 2 minus the square root of 3. So here's what you guys need to